I'm Darren and I'm Neurodivergent. Right, so my neurodivergent journey, I'll give you a very capped uh, view of that. So it's left school, it was asked to, to leave the sixth form because I, yeah, that didn't work out for me. School wasn't going to work, wasn't going to work. Went into car parts and warehousing, did that for a couple of years, got qualified in it, didn't want to do that. Went into land surveying, got bored of that. Uh, went into site management, I got bored of that. Uh, started my own groundworks company and my own motorbike shop. Uh, that was before 2007 though, and then when the financial collapse come, people weren't buying houses and they weren't buying motorbikes. So, moved on from that, went back to house building, uh, actually got made redundant from there, and moved into the water industry. And that's when it really sort of come out. That was the supportive company, the one that wanted to know what made me tick, really helped me come out with Michelle. Uh, I quite quickly moved up within that company. So going from that, struggling around at the early part, to now I manage a team of engineers. That's the difference an environment can make that it really just opened me up completely. And, and the more I unmask and the more I, I'm open and I talk about it, uh, the more they want. Mm. So it, it's a fantastic environment, so yeah. I've always suspected that I was ADHD, so all the way through, I, 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 but I never really researched it, so I went through a couple of training courses at work actually that opened up well, how does the mind work and I found a few things where my work, mind worked differently and that led me to sort of think, well yeah let's look at this properly. You know a couple of people have said to me yeah so ADHD uh, uh, so I was like fine let's, let's find out. Uh, initially I went for the assessment uh, and they were like yeah you, you are, uh, and I stopped there because there was something there thinking well I don't need to know, I don't need a full diagnosis because I don't want to do meds. I don't know, and there was something blocking me there, I don't know what that was, it was that there's nothing wrong with me so I don't want medication because that suggests there is, there was definitely that there. Then later on that year I went again, I got the proper diagnosis then and I, I did far more research as ADHD is great for research and I did try the meds and it made a massive difference just for doing the boring stuff that I struggled with before. I've never had a problem doing something interesting quite the opposite I, I love getting into it uh, it was it was the, that little difference to, to take out that boring stuff so I get it done and focus on the good stuff so it's uh, from that initial apprehension about you know what's me and what's ADHD it's there is no difference I am who I am and now I know the ADHD I can research it a hell of a lot more and it's it's brought me on in, in my career One thing I get quite a lot, and, and, and with any kind of um, anything that's outside of the typical world, you, you get this where I'll say I'm ADHD uh, to, to somebody who, who generally not a lot of people know about ADHD, they kind of know, and um, you start saying some of the things about, uh, you know, struggling to focus on the boring stuff, going, getting really focused on stuff that you really enjoy. Uh, as you start explaining them, you always get the I'm a bit like that. Oh, oh, always. Oh, every conversation generally has that and said, well, that's the point. ADHD isn't a completely different brain, a different way of doing everything. It, we're all on the same measures. It's as you measure the way I think and the way I behave, or the way I think, is um, I'll be high on this one, low on that one, and it'll be quite a disparity. And, and when you start getting high on some of them and it actually starts affecting your life, that's when it becomes ADHD, not all of them, we will all score on every one of them, so it's not that different. It frees me up to be particularly creative. Uh, there's resilience in there, there's that whole, if something needs doing, and uh, there's no guidelines, I love it. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't like that, they like to have confides and clear guidance and what have you. It's a good example, I, I started a whole department where I work now and it was literally a blank sheet uh, mm. and that, it, it was the biggest difference in my career to, to keeping me in the same place longer than I've ever had any job. Mm. You know, I, and I've moved around within the company but that place that I am now is fantastic and I, ADHD really does help me to throw something at me and I'll deal with it. Absolutely, and I, I've had good feedback in work where people are like, I, I wish I could be like that, you know, no matter what comes up, you're like, oh, okay, and you're working with it and you're dealing with it, 
uh, there's no stopping. Uh, and so that's if I had to pull one thing out, that, that's the biggest benefit of ADHD. One of the weaknesses that I have identified in, in, in the way I work particularly is organisation. So if there's a meeting on Wednesday that I need to prep for, it'll be uh, Tuesday afternoon, last thing. I need that time pressure to actually motivate me to do it. Uh, I have actually um, prepared things to present in a meeting. <laughs> uh, so I wouldn't advise doing that, but you can do it because again, that resilience comes out. You use like outlook at work. I put, if I know I need to do something next week, I'll literally put a calendar reminder in and I'll blank out an hour or whatever it needs to be to do it then. And that then, as long as I can create the time pressure myself, because I know it doesn't need to be until the following whenever, that's when I do it. That time's aside, that's what I do, it's done, and then I can forget about it. And literally, I mean forget about it. You know, if you ask me, have you done that? Well, uh, and I'll go in and sure enough, that it's done. Now, without that, it would always be last minute and it would always be uh, on off the cuff, that type of thing. So such a simple thing to put in place that now when I go out and ask people for feedback on how I am, one of the things they come back with, you're really organised. And that's the feedback I get and it's like, yeah, no, I have to be organised in that way. Uh, and But isn't it great that one of my weaknesses people see as one of my strengths? fortunate to work in a good company now so in the past I've worked for other companies that uh, would not recognize or even deal with neurodiversity and there's a lot of experience around that out there the company I'm in now is very people-centered so the support I got they didn't know I was neurodivergent I didn't know for sure I was neurodivergent so this was a number of years back where they'd recognized my way of working and where I was what I was doing and actually look, well, where's the best, what's the best fit for you? So to be in a company for a start that just looked at that and said, well, you're really good at this, let's get you in there and do that. A, a company that was always changing, always trying to be better and, and push things on and look at what we're doing and say, well, whatever we're doing now isn't good enough. What's next? That unlocked a lot. It helped me unmask, to be honest, at work and, and, and be, I held back a heck of a lot. In, in meetings and in everything that I did because those ideas from that came from that neurodiverse part of me uh, weren't welcome in previous companies because we're traditional and we, we play, you know, we're in that direction. So to unleash that side of things just by the way they were was one of the biggest uh, helps to me because I think the power from ADHD particularly is say it. And so quite often I'll start a sentence by I don't know where this is going yet, but, uh, blah, and I'll start talking. And the amount of times I get about halfway through and someone in the room will go, oh, what about this? And I'll just sit back and phew, the idea is going. So to be in that environment, that is the biggest help for anyone, being in the right environment. One of the reasons I wanted to work with Foothold actually was as I went through school, I was told I would never achieve my t potential because I don't focus enough, I daydream, stop daydreaming, focus more. Uh, the word just gets banned, just stop daydreaming, just focus more. And it's like whenever you use just in a sentence, I think you're justifying what you're saying and really take that out and stop daydreaming. Well, be more interesting is my comeback to that. And now I know I wish I could have had that to say, your lesson's moving too slow. I already know what you're talking about, move it on. So the fault wasn't with me, it was in the environment again. But when you leave school then, and this is what I want to get to really with any apprentices or anyone coming out of that world into the working world, is you might not have had the right fo focus on what you should work on. You know, do you want to focus on what you're bad at? So for me, organization and, and, and staying on task and stuff, or do you want to work on what you're really good at? So I do creativity. I do uh, passion, I do all that sort of stuff is held back if you want me to focus on trying to be this rounded character, the neurotypical world character that you expect employers to want, employers might not want that. If you can really unleash what you've got, that's what I want to get, is to actually take that doubt away for, for people. I wish I had had that when I started out, because I hid.
you know, I, I did all right, I did well. Uh, I could have done much better and much earlier if, if I'd actually unmasked earlier. For any organisation or any line manager or anyone who, who deals with people, there's a long way to go from where we are right now from a, a, a knowledge and experience and knowing what neurodiversity is. So the first bit, you, you can't do it all. You're not going to have this fantastic neuro-inclusive workplace. The one thing I'd say straight away is knowledge, learning, training, getting to actually know what neurodiversity is and what it means and when someone's neurodivergent, it, get rid of some of the stereotypes that come with it. The, uh, dyslexia, for example, I'll give them a blue screen, or, uh, or, or, or you know, yeah, that might actually help, but it's not about that. When you realise that uh, something like ADHD, for example, does have a few drawbacks but comes with massive benefits, then you start thinking, well, a neuro inclusive environment at work, yes, it'll help the individual, but more than that, it massively helps the company. Because if you need to be versatile to do things new to do things to get out that make a difference in your industry that different way of thinking is is, is magic and you look at the big uh, tech companies like google microsoft and wherever you're building your diverse teams they've been on it way before uh, a lot of other people that getting rid of that naivety getting rid of what you think your diversity is and actually learning a bit about it shows the advantages and then a company can say well actually this is worth investing in time, whether there's time, money, whatever that is, once you get that, it'll happen. So absolutely, training and knowledge. So within my workplace, uh, I'm really, really fortunate actually. Uh, we've got employee networks. So we've got the ability network for anyone with long-term conditions and we're up here. Uh, we've got LGBTQ+, plus, got the various networks. And I thought, we need a neurodiverse network. This needs that kind of focus to, to bring things together, to bring people together, to actually get that focus on it. So I did, I reached out to one of our directors and immediately got the response, yes, let's do this. There's a couple hundred people that have actually signed up to it. Uh, I've brought line manager training into the company and I've got uh, a, a place to bring everything together because as a company, they were doing pockets. So dyslexia help was over here and uh, general neurodiversity over there, ADHD over there, what, 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 it was too spread out and you, as a, if a line manager then come across and said what do I do? Someone's come to me and said they're, they're autistic. What? Do, oh right well it, it needs to be in one place doesn't it? So it was really centralising all of that. One place to go because when you start pushing this neurodiversity uh, you need it to make it easy for people. You, you don't want to say yeah yeah you want to know about it but then they can't do it. So giving advice to someone starting out now, it is a different world now. It is better understood. And hopefully people coming through have had that in school or university or college or wherever they've been to before during the workplace have been uh, assessed or diagnosed or something so they might be in a better place for that. Uh, if you haven't, or even if you have, I'd, I'd, I'd lean into it. You know, what an engineer is great and all, and you're a typical engineer, great. A neurodiverse engineer could be something absolutely magical, and you're going to lose that if you don't lean into it and find out what you are. It's also setting you up for how you're going to be going forward. So I missed that whole probably 20 years, 15 years, whatever, of my career trying to mask and fit in. Whereas actually, what could I have done if I'd done that? So be open. Hopefully you're in a company that's open and honest and free and has the psychological safety that you can say, I'm neurodivergent in this way, ADHD for me, uh, and this is what it means for me. Because everyone's neurodivergent is different, you know. Reach out, get the support, and be the best you can be. Well, the reason I reached out to uh, Foothold was I did a webinar a while back earlier this year, uh, and I, they detailed some of the stuff that they do and uh, the different wired hub I then joined at a look and the resources on there it would be great for someone who maybe isn't quite sure that they're neurodiverse or maybe they are they know go on there have a read at the thing 
a lot of the neurodivergent help out there is uh, you'll have to pick what you want because it might not my ADHD isn't your ADHD isn't their ADHD you'll find what you want there there's plenty of information on there I particularly like that there's people on there too you know people uh, that have been there that have done it that are engineers uh, and then they've overcome those challenges that they had that it's great to be able to contact people like that and then particularly I was quite surprised actually to find that there's some help around diagnosis so Foothold or off of the Engineering Neurodiverse Futures program there and I'd absolutely recommend having a look at it, seeing it if you, if you think you might be neurodiverse because it's going to ask you some questions and it's going to perhaps bring out, well, you know what, if you're not, it doesn't matter, have a look and it might even help you anyway. So have a look at that, but definitely get on that. The earlier you can get on that diagnosis path, the better. And Diagnosis might not mean medication, it might mean uh, accommodations in the workplace, it might mean that you just understand yourself better. And the earlier you get that in your career, the better it will serve you right the way through. Because that's one of the worst things at the moment. I know uh, my children struggle in uh, child, so uh, uh, it's taking too long, basically. And I think one of them is actually going to time out and join the adult system, which is still years to get that diagnosis and when you're starting out an apprenticeship years is no good because years you've already done uh, and you've missed that boat so having that kind of help in there and I believe there's some kind of financial help on there as well for some people absolutely priceless <laughs>